그 앤더슨 관장님께서는 옥스퍼드 대학교 세인트 존스 대학에서 이제 공부를 하셨고요. 어, 그 다음에 이제 그 1992년부터 10년에 걸쳐서 대형 박물관의 관장직을 맡고 계셨습니다. 그리고 현재는 케임브리지 대학교 어, 클레홀 칼리지의 부총장으로 계시고요. 뭐 과학사와 박물관 쪽에 관심이 많고 많은 저서가 있으십니다. 오늘 발표해 주실 어, 그 내용은 한국국제교류재단 한국실 더 다양하고 풍성한 박물관을 만들다 라는 제목입니다. 박수로 맞아주시기 바랍니다. <웃음> Ladies and gentlemen, um, first of all, I must thank the Career Foundation most warmly for giving me this opportunity to participate in the workshop um, in the, to celebrate sorry, the 15 years of organizing the Career and Curators Workshop. And I'm delighted to personally to be back in Korea. During my 10 years at the British Museum, I came to understand and appreciate Korean culture in a way I'd never previously been able to before. And this was due to the Foundation's support and the very revealing sponsored visits which I paid to your country over that period. What I shall be presenting now is mainly based on my experiences at the British Museum, though I fully recognize that there's been an upsurge of interest in Korea in many museums around the world since the 1990s, for which the Korea Foundation um, can take much of the credit. <clears throat> Increasingly, in recent years, museums have been boasting that they are encyclopedic when, when they describe themselves. And this is meant to tell us that the museum concerned has ambitions to be comprehensive in its coverage of world cultures, and that the coverage of its material spans over long periods of time. In addition to this title, they also wish to indicate to us that their collections are large, that their curators are scholarly, and that they provide authoritative opinions on the objects which they care for. I think you want to turn that around. Turn that around. There you go, so push the one on the right. There we go. <clears throat> of course, no museum in the world is encyclopedic and covers all the subjects which museums deal with. No museum, for example, includes Egyptian mummies, Cubist paintings, and African beetles, as far as I know. In this slide, um, we see one of the most encyclopedic um, museums in the world, the Pitt Rivers Museum of Ethnology in Oxford. An art museum can attempt to be encyclopedic within the limits of its discipline, and even a museum which defines its coverage more narrowly, such a, as a museum of Asian art, can define itself in this way as long as its interests cover, in this particular case, the whole of Asia. Although the term encyclopedic museum itself has only become fashionable in recent years, a number of museums have tried to be encyclopedic since their origins. Museums of this kind are the British Museum, which was founded in 1753, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, founded in 1870, and the State Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, which was declared a public museum in 1917, although earlier it had, mem it had admitted members of the public. Each of these museums includes objects from all around the world spanning from prehistoric times to the present day. There have been gaps in their collections, of course, and for many museums, a frequent gap has been presenting material coming from the Korean Peninsula. What I want to do in my paper today is to indicate how the work of the Korea Foundation has managed to make museums aware that the culture of Korea is distinctive, and that by helping museums to establish public galleries which display material from Korea, they are making those museums more encyclopedic than they ever have been in the past. In fact, the collecting of Korean objects by museums in Europe and North America did start more than 100 years ago, before the end of the Joseon dynasty. In 1878, in the printed catalogue of his collection of Far Eastern ceramics, Augustus Wollaston Franks, one of the truly great curators of the British Museum, included a brief entry on six examples of Korean pottery, concluding with the remark, and I quote from him, the obscurity in which the subject is enveloped can only be dissipated by a better acquaintance with Korea and its inhabitants. Active collectors of Korean artifacts in East Asia in the late 19th century included the Americans Edward Morse, whose collection came to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, and Pierre, Pierre Jouy, whose collection entered the United States National Museum in Washington. One of the most important collections of Korean material was that collected by Aubrey Leblanc and depo deposited in the Victorian Alp Museum in London in 1914. The great ceramic scholar Bernard Rackham wrote the catalogue, which was published four years later, which you see now on the screen. And it includes the words, and I quote again, 
It is doubtful whether any larger or more important collection of Korean pottery exists in Europe, since only isolated specimens have hitherto made their way into the national museums. Gradually, Korean objects entered the largest museums of Europe and America, but there were no galleries devoted exclusively to a career. Exceptionally, the Honolulu Museum of Art had a Korean room when it opened in 1927, but in other cases, Korean pieces were integrated, usually into Japanese galleries. This was unfortunate because rather than emphasizing the distinct artifactual culture of Korea, the public mentality merged them together and they were considered as simply a variety of Japanese wares. Most Korean material which existed in Western museums were ceramics. They were easier to collect because they were so much more available than, say, bronzes or lacquerware. In Britain, there had already been a long-standing tradition of collecting Chinese ceramics, and it's not surprising that by the time of the Treaty of Friendship and Commerce between Korea and Britain, which was signed in 1883, this interest was maintained as increased contact between the two countries became possible. The metallurgist William Gowland collected three kingdoms, pottery, three kingdoms pottery when he visited Korea in 1884, and this is now in the British Museum. Between the two world wars, more Korean acquisitions were made, in particular from the Euphemopolis collection in the 1930s, including this very rare Goryeo Dynasty copper red glazed tea bowl. But it would be misleading to say that there was nothing but ceramics. The Museum of Fine Arts in Boston acquired a spectacular silver ewer and basin of the, of the Koryo period, and there are rare sutra boxes for Buddhist texts in the British Museum and in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Paintings are also being collected, such as this 18th century landscape by Jong Song, which is in the Brooklyn Museum. The terrible conflict on the Korean peninsula between 1950 and 1953 had, as a byproduct, a heightened interest in Korea, Korean culture in the West. Some American and European military personnel returned home with Korean material, which they started to appreciate. The British Museum collected, received a significant donation of Korean objects from a public health worker, Dr. Frederick Poulsen Hansen, who'd worked in Korea as a health worker in the 1950s, and we see his water droppers um, on the screen. It can be seen that interest in Korean culture in the West was slowly being built up during the course of the 20th century by means of exhibitions which were sent from Korea. One of the earliest was Masterpieces of Korean Art, shown from 1957, first at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, and then at seven other American museums. In 1961, from May, March to May, the Arts Council of Great Britain arranged for an exhibition, The National Art Treasures of Korea, which was shown at the Victoria and Albert Museum. And this included 152 pieces, one of which was the iconic Maitreya in your National Museum. The review in The Observer, the newsp a newspaper, it reported, and I quote, if the art of China and Japan is well known in the West, that of Korea is almost totally overlooked. Yet Korean art is the missing link between that of China and Japan. Another exhibition, Treasures from Korea, was sent to the British Museum by the National Museum of Korea in 1984, with nearly twice as many exhibits, including a particularly strong group of Choson paintings. <coughs> this exhibition continued to heighten public interest. And it was around this time that the British Association of Korean Studies was formed. And that's another interesting point, the moment at which um, these kinds of societies were being created in Europe and in North America. The Korea Foundation program of support for overseas museums started shortly after it was set up in 1991 with the aim of enhancing the image of Korea in the world and also to promote academic and cultural exchange programs. We must remember that the remit of the foundation is quite diverse and that the development of Korean galleries is only part of the story. It was very shortly after its establishment that the British Museum was involved in discussions about the establishment of what would be the first gallery devoted to Korea in the museum's 240 year history. Support was offered and the curator of Chinese art was allocated the task of developing the gallery. The museum decided that Jane Portal should take a degree in Korean studies at the School of Oriental and African Studies at London University, which also involved spending a year learning the Korean language at Yonsei University. In the event, 
The museum could not open its gallery in 1997, as it was first hoped, because of the major building works which were being undertaken, compounded by the disruption caused by moving the vast bookstock of the British Library out of the building where it had been housed since 1857. Nevertheless, the museum did feel a sense of responsibility for presenting its Korean collection at that time, and a temporary exhibition was established for the purpose, which was opened in July 1997 by the Duke of Gloucester, who's the, who was the Queen's representative on the museum board, in the presence of the Korean ambassador to the UK, Mr. Dong Jin Cho, and the president of the Korea Foundation, Mr. Jung Won Kim. The longer timescale for the permanent gallery allowed a more considered view of how it should be developed, and several visits were undertaken to Korean museums. One idea which was stimulated by a visit made by Ms. Portal to the National Museum in Seoul was that a sarangbang should be constructed within the gallery. And here we see the result. This was designed by Mr. Shin Yong Yong Hoon and created in London by a team of Korean craftsmen. The furnishings would be specially made by a contemporary master craftsman, Chang Yang Woon Mo. And that would provide more coherence than if, if a mixed selection of historical furniture were sought and purchased. It was agreed that the British Museum's collection was weak on early material. And the National Museum, here in Seoul, agreed to lend some key pieces on a three-year loan basis. Another benefit arranged by the museum was that some important manuscripts and printed books could, would be borrowed from the British Library, including the important 1809 polychrome court painting contained in the Royal Ritual Record of 1749, a leaf of which we see, or which I'd hoped we would see, here. New acquisitions were made where possible at this time. For example, a set of 14 porcelain epitaph tablets of which the museum had previously had no example. The in-house designer of the gallery also had the opportunity to travel to Korea, which was, I think, important. And as a, as a result, though the gallery is in Bloomsbury in the heart of London, an appropriate feeling was created by having the floor planking laid out in a Korean manner and the windows shuttered in a Korean style. The Korea Foundation Gallery was opened on the 8th of November 2000 by the president of the Korea Foundation, Dr. Lee In Ho, and the British Secretary of State for Culture, the Right Honorable Chris Smith. And it was amongst the first sponsored galleries to be completed, despite the three-year delay. The effect of this gallery devoted to Korea, the first in the British Museum's history, as I've said, has been very striking. Apart from displaying wonderful Korean objects, it's created an educational resource for the public understanding of Korean culture. It's also provided an impetus for the museum to devote much greater attention to Korea. The British Museum started collecting artifacts with increased seriousness when it was known that the gallery was going to be created. For example, this um, Choson period moon jar was purchased prior to the opening with the help of a Korean uh, benefactor, um, Dr. Han Kwang Ho. It has an important Korean-British connection, this particular piece, because the jar was originally purchased by the famous English potter Bernard Leach when he was in Korea studying ceramic making skills. We must remember that Korea and China have been extremely important in the development of 20th century um, ceramic traditions in the West. Um, Bernard Leach gave this um, pot to the um, British-based potter Lucy Ree, and the museum purchased it at a London auction in 1998. And I believe that's entirely due to the fact that the Korea Foundation had supported the development of a Korean gallery in, in the British Museum. The presence of this jar, let's see it now, st sorry, this is another jar, stimulated the Korean curator to acquire a contemporary moon jar made by Pak Yong Suk. It is, of course, difficult for museums to buy earlier material unless the item left Korea before export legislation was introduced. But in 2000, the year 2000, the Korean parliament relaxed the export rules somewhat if the objects are destined for public museums. There are no such import problems when dealing with contemporary art. And because the current art scene is so vigorous in Korea, many curators are anxious to display modern arts of the country. And here we see work by the potter Yi Soo Kyung. The museum in Boston um, opened its Korean gallery only last year, showing a pot by this particular potter. And as it's entered, visitors are confronted by what I think is an uncompromising, sorry, I've gone backwards again. There we are. An uncompromising work 
um, by her, which is called Translated Vase, and which was made in the year 2011. In fact, it integrates rather well with, early, with earlier ceramics and makes the important point to visitors that there is continuity of artistic tradition in Korea, which comes right up to the present day. A small problem which museums will increasingly need to, need to overcome, and I suspect that the curators here in the workshop will be discussing this, is that in many of them there exists a department of contemporary art. It is such departments which collect present-day material from around the world, and it's most unlikely that curators working in a contemporary department would possess any knowledge of contemporary Korean art. Yet it is they who must recommend such pieces for purchase. The Yi Sung Kyung Pot, which you see on the screen, was purchased by the Museum of Fine Arts Contemporary Department and was originally displayed in its contemporary gallery alongside paintings and sculptures which mainly came from Europe and North America. If relationships between curators and different museum departments are good, then there may be no problem. But there may be challenging in-house issues which need to be resolved. Talking of curators, I'd like to make a few remarks about who in a museum has responsibility for Korean collections. Until quite recently, European and American museums nearly always chose European and American staff to look after Asia. Only in a very few cases did the, curia, did, did, did the curators speak or read the Korean language. Usually such curators were experts in China or Japan, and only a very few could say that their sole responsibility was for Korea. This arrangement produced, in my opinion, a rather unprofessional approach. There has recently been a development in some museums where, rather than employing pure Westerners, the curators who have been appointed have been born in Korea, travelled to universities overseas to work for PhDs in art history, and have then got jobs in, as, as curators, as Korean curators. They read and speak Korean, and they're imbued with Korean culture. And this is currently the case, I believe, for the current curators of the Museum, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and the Asian Art Museum in San Francisco. And I believe it's to be welcomed. But I hope, however, that this will not discourage Westerners from studying Korean culture and taking up curatorial positions if they become sufficiently proficient and knowledgeable. Another important byproduct of the Korea Foundation galleries has been a significant increase in published books and catalogues dealing with the country's history and culture. And you only have to look outside on that, um, on that book stand to see what's been published in recent years. As examples, um, in 2000, the British Museum produced um, Korea, Art and Archaeology by Jane Portal, which is now used as a textbook by a number of university art history departments. In San Francisco in 2006, the Asian Art Museum produced Kumya Pax Kim's The, Korea, the Art of Korea, which I hope you see, yes. And the Musée Guimet in Paris published La Corrient by Pierre Gambon in 2011. To mark the opening of the Korea Foundation in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, the Arts of Korea appeared last year. Museums' shops are now stocked with more books on Korean art and culture than at any other time in the past. And again, this is a byproduct of the Korea Foundation program. It's important to say that the, cre the creation of Korea Foundation galleries, and there are 90, I don't know whether we've got the statistics quite the same, but I believe there are 19 of them in North America, seven in Europe, and two elsewhere, is the start rather than the end of the process. Because galleries need renewal. You can't just do a gallery and leave it there forever. They lose their initial freshness, new objects need to be introduced into the displays, and changing scholarship requires some of the objects to be reinterpreted. There is also stimulus brought by introducing temporary exhibitions with different themes highlighted by borrowing material from other collections. This allows the possibility of unexpected juxtapositions, of showing ancient alongside modern objects, and of introducing strong storylines. Temporary exhibitions should be different from permanent galleries, allowing an element of might I say risk, even controversy, knowing that although, although in a few months the show will have moved on elsewhere, a debate will have been started. Now, I get onto a difficult subject because talking of controversy, I'd like to say something about how the British Museum has collected and displayed objects from North Korea. And I don't mean from the ancient Kaguryo Kingdom, but from the period after the conflict of 1950 to 1953, when Korea, of course, was divided. The reason that this has become possible was that the United Kingdom and the DPR, DPRK developed diplomatic relations in the year 2000. And a year later, I was invited to bring a small cultural development um, delegation to Pyongyang. 
The invitation was accepted partly because the British Museum and the British Library wished to have the opportunity of collecting material which had not been available for the previous half century, ever since the war. The argument which we knew would be raised against our collecting was that everything produced over that 50-year period was propaganda, not art. And we had several responses to this. For one thing, we wanted to discover whether the tr traditional arts of Korea were being produced alongside overtly political material, and we found that in some cases they were. Um, secondly, much of the British Museum collection could not be described as art anyway. I don't believe you can call Stone Age axe heads or 18th century political art cartoons art in the, shall we say, the normal sense. A further response was that the museum already contained a great deal of propaganda material. Here you see on the right um, a pose adopted by public statues of the Roman Emperor Augustus, which were made in huge quantities and put up in pl public spaces. Both are propaganda art. The visit, I believe, was a success. Many paintings, calligraphic scrolls, posters, ceramics, and lacquerware were acquired at the time and in a following visit in 2002. Some Korean visitors to London considered the temporary display of this material in a lobby adjoining the Korea Foundation Gallery to be controversial and have asked for it to be removed, while some Korean, South Korean newspapers printed critical reports. So far, Korea, North Korean objects have not been displayed alongside traditional art from the South, and I think it may be sensible not to do so. But the British Museum felt that it would be wrong to deny the existence of recent North Korean material, whatever its status. It's interesting that quite recently, a Korea Foundation Curators Workshop has actually paid a visit um, to Kaesong. There are a number of interesting issues which arise from which I've been discussing. There remains the question of whether museums should display single cultures in one gallery at a time, or whether they should uh, incorporate some integration of art from other traditions so that influences to and from different cultural areas can be brought to the attention of museum visitors. This intermixing has been done with much more in Western museums than, than, than those in the East. However, the new National Museum at Yongsan does include other Asian cultures, though I believe in distinct spaces and at different levels within the museum. And this is in contrast to the situation in earlier iterations of the National Museum. I think this development is to be applauded. It cannot be denied, for example, that Korea and China had early trade links and that later Korea had a major influence on developing Japanese ceramics. To make this kind of thing clear is part of a museum's educational function. Something which needs to be avoided is any approach which might be interpreted as being nationalistic, a problem which has presented itself in the National Museums in some, in some countries in the past. Director Anderson, uh, your time is off, so please conclude your uh, I will presentation. I conclude pretty quickly. The Korea Foundation does much more than support the construction of Korean galleries. It has themed curators' workshops for the past 15 years, and these have been very successful. I can't, no, let me see. I see I've been banned from showing, oh, no, no. <laughs> um, I will, I will, I will, I've only got another page to read. Um, many of those who participated in these, um, in these workshops have produced very successful galleries which have been supported by the Foundation. Another initiative which has just been discussed is, 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 is um, bringing young um, curators to work alongside experienced curators in the West. And I think, I will say controversially, that apprenticeships such as these can be so much more valuable than learning museum theory in university departments. Um, there are still issues which need attention. One is the need to endow curatorial posts in museums so that there can be assurance in the long term for the care, presentation, and scholarly um, attention of Korean collections. Another is that because there are now multiple sources of overseas museum funding available from official Korean sources, this can cause confusion. I imagine, though I do not know, that the future of the museum support program is being discussed, and it's likely that most museums in Europe, which have significant collections of Korean art, have already received assistance. The smaller collections which remain are unlikely to have sufficient material needed to present the breadth and sophistication of Korean culture. Um, there remains the issue, of course, of the possibility of creating collections of contemporary um, Korean art. as a curator's workshop. There we are. Um, and this, shows, uh, and it, uh, this slide shows um, a part of an exhibition um, in an um, Australian museum, I think quite recently, I think in um, Sydney.
One final issue I shall raise is the way in which Korean artifacts have been split in overseas museums between art, ethnography, and natural history. In some places, it's even divided between departments within the same museum. And this artificial distinction um, detracts from being able to create a broader picture. Now, my final words. Finally, I do want to applaud the Korea Foundation um, and the Korean government for taking steps to support its, its culture overseas. Here we see the new gallery, sorry, the new gallery, which has just recently opened in um, Boston. Little else like it exists to support museums and the curators who work in them, and it's been extremely beneficial for promoting the tradition of Korea's artistic heritage. The arts, crafts, and history of Korea are known and appreciated much more widely throughout the world now than at any time in the past. The museum encyclopedia has become that much richer and complete. Thank you. 네, 대단히 감사합니다. 그, 어, 그동안 대형 박물관장으로 재직을 하시면서 이 한국 미술의 진흥에 대해서 어, 많은 힘을 기울여 주셨습니다. 아, 그래서 오늘의 발...